Well, you can't get any better than this. Great weather. We're on a patio and obviously chatting with Jackie Redman, anchor for Sportsnet. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited to be here, actually. I love what you do. I think it's a it's an amazing idea and I, it's it's awesome to see women supporting women. So thank you so much. Props to you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's been an interesting process, but, you know, we, we, we really um, want to profile women like yourself who are doing things in the industry and, you know, have an interesting story to tell. So, you know, your career pretty much, uh, you know, skyrocketed after the Gillette draft uh, competition. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about the journey of uh, winning that competition as the first female uh, to ever <laughs> win it and then to where you are now today. Oh my goodness, it's been crazy. And when I think about Gillette Drafted, it actually doesn't feel like a real thing that happened. It feels like a dream situation um, because it's still surreal to me six years later, which tells you how unreal of an experience it really was. Um, it was the most nerve-wracking thing I've ever done, but also the most exciting. I mean, I had never been in a professional studio really before. Um, and you're basically auditioning in front of the entire country while nine other people are hoping that you fail yeah, because they want the job. Um, so it was, it was nuts and I don't regret any of it. I was, I actually contemplated not doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, because I was so terrified, but I had to, I had to go for it, and obviously it, it worked out. Um, and when you say that you were terrified, like who in your circle? Because sometimes it's just like you need your squad or your, your parents to be like, you can do this, and you get that extra strength. Like who was it that was able to say, Jackie, you know what, you really need to do this? You know what it was? It was, so a little, maybe a little backstory here. I was actually auditioning for an NHL show uh, prior to Gillette Drafted for like six months back and forth, London where I grew up, um, and Toronto, audition after audition. And I finally got down to the, they were looking for one female host and one male host. And it came down to me and two other girls, and they called, it was gonna be a daily hockey show. And they called me and they were like, yeah, you know, you're just, you're a little young, too green, like keep working though, like we think you're great. I was devastated, because I thought, I believed that, was that show was yeah. it, like yeah. this was my break. Um, and I didn't get it and I was devastated and about a month later the same producers called me and said you know we didn't give you that job but we think you have a ton of potential and there's this show Gillette drafted and we think you should go out and audition for it or send in a tape whatever you want to do um, and just see what happens and so I was like I don't know I said to my dad I was like Steve-o. Steve-o, yeah. <laughs> Hashtag pints. Um, I said to my dad, like, I don't know. I mean, hockey, I know my hockey. Baseball, I know my baseball. But Gillette Drafted, you have to know everything. And anybody who knows me or follows me knows, like, I hate soccer. It's not my thing. You're putting yourself out there, as you said, in front of, it was a national competition. Exactly. So I was like, I don't know if I have the chops to do this because I'm going to have to talk about things like soccer that I'm that I don't follow as much and he was like you have to go for it or you're going to regret it the rest of your life just rely on what you do now and go and just go for it like you can do this this is your dream so go for it and so after talking to him I was like okay you know what like what's the worst thing that can happen yeah I'm just going to own who I am and if I don't know something then I will just and look what happened I will just go with it <laughs> and so it worked out the funny thing is um, my final challenge on Gillette drafted they sent me to Chicago to cover a friendly between the Chicago Fire and Manchester United oh, so wow. I make the final two yeah. I'm obviously so excited yes. and I mean really I wasn't supposed you to say Manchester anyone. United Wow yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were they came over for a friendly and so I wasn't really supposed to tell anyone anything that was happening, but I had to call my dad and be like, you are not gonna believe what I have to do. And the guy I was up against got to go to Boston um, and do batting practice with Boston Red Sox. So I was like, why couldn't it be the reverse? I know. But you know what, it was, it was, the mo it was really challenging that final assignment. But I, once I got through it and I, and I still won the show, I was like, okay, if I can do that, I can do anything. So I was reading um, a news release after you obviously won the Gillette Drafted and one of the persons that was quoted in the, the release said that you won because you had passion, consistency and poise. How important are those three characteristics now that you're 
Sportsnet anchor, obviously uh, in front of many Canadians every night or whenever we see you. How important are those three characteristics in your job right now? Passion, poise, and, and you were consistent. Consistency. Yeah. Is that Greg Sansoni? Yeah. I don't. I think it was someone. I was like, like reading it. that quote, and I was like, wow, <laughs> yeah, you do need those those skills. Um, I would say that they're crucial, um, to be honest. Passion, obviously, I, I really think my passion for what I do is the reason I've gotten where I've gotten. It's the reason I work so hard. It's the reason I'm willing to sacrifice nights, weekends, social lives, friends' weddings, um, is because I'm passionate. And if I wasn't able to make those sacrifices or I didn't want to because I didn't care enough, I really don't think that I would be where I am. I think once I got my foot in the door through Gillette Drafted, it was my work ethic and my passion that really took me the rest of the way. It wasn't because I'm any more talented than anybody else that wants to do this. I think I just put the work in and um, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I wasn't genuinely passionate about my goals. Um, consistency I think is good in any profession. <laughs> um, if you're consistently good, then you know when you have a bad day, you make up for it yeah. the next time because you 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 have that consist that ability to be consistent um, and poise. I love that word. I actually take that as a huge compliment because, as you know, things in television never go smoothly. Yep. Like if it can go wrong, <laughs> it usually will, or yep. nothing's ever perfect. And I think if you're able to stay poised. Um, and be composed and comfortable in your environment and just rely on the fact that you know what you're doing, yeah. then you can handle any of those obstacles that come your way or problems. You can adapt and I think the ability to adapt and remain poised while doing so, that's what separates, I think, um, people who are good and people who are great. Not that I'm saying that about myself, I no, just think, are. I just you believe are. that though. You know, it's why you, you're where you're at today. Um, you talked about putting the work in. Now your brand and also just fan engagement, it's kind of, um, I won't say spilled over, but I mean you uh, strategically um, are, are now engaging with your fans on Facebook um, and other social media platforms. But, you know, tell me a little bit about Feisty Fridays and, and <laughs> why you want to engage your fans uh, through that format. Um, for me, I feel like social media was really gaining steam when I started in the business and Twitter was something that I really enjoyed and I built a following kind of accidentally on purpose, accidentally on purpose and now I just kind of feel like I have so many supporters out there and I have such a great following and I don't want to take it for granted because I look around in the industry and not everybody has that. Um, so Feisty Friday is just, uh, it's a little baby project of mine to kind of let people into my life, to kind of tear down that third wall and show people who I am. Um, I used to do a show called Live at the Score where I got to talk about sports and have an opinion and have a voice. And I love what I do now, but I've lost that platform a little bit um, in the things that I do because they are very uh, condensed to time. So I really wanted to get back to that and, and using my platform the best that I can because as a woman, having a platform in sports, first, first and foremost, it's rare. Yeah. Um, and having the ability to have a platform and to say something and have an opinion and show that you, you know, can hang with everybody else. And you know your stuff. And you know your stuff. I want people to know that. And um, I want girls that are growing up now in elementary school and high school, girls in college that want to do whatever it is that they want to do, um, that their opinion matters and their voice matters. And thanks to social media, you can actually send that message without saying, like, you go girl, like yeah. you have a voice. Yeah. You can show it by actually doing it and by taking your platform and saying, you know, maybe I only have 30 seconds on TV every night to kind of give a very quick opinion about the Blue Jays game. But I have Facebook and I have Twitter and I have Instagram and I have Instagram Live and I have YouTube and I have all of these things at my disposal and I have people watching. Yeah. And I think it's almost my responsibility to use that. And so that's kind of where the birth of Feisty Friday came from. Wanting to engage with my fans, but also wanting to have a voice and to show people that you should have a voice and you should use it. So you talked a little bit about um, image and um, you know having a voice. Uh, you know, how important is for you to use your platform to, to reach, you know, young girls 
who, you know, there's there's a lot of issues these days with image and body conscious and whatever, um, just to show them that, you know, you can have lipstick on, you can do your lashes, but you're knowledgeable. You still know what you're talking about. And you can still be a, a woman, you know? Um, you know what? This actually reminds me of being a kid. And I think I was really lucky in the sense that I had a dad who, I mean, he was obviously very passionate about sports, um, but he used to take me into the garage, which is where he always hangs out after the game. And he would listen to those call-in shows, like the Leafs call-in shows and the Jays call-in shows. And the caller would call in and ask a question. And my dad would turn to me and he would talk to me about it. He'd ask me what I thought. I'm like 10 years old, but I, I was his buddy. My mom traveled a lot for work, so as I got older, I became his boy, basically. <laughs> and uh, he would wonder. ask me questions <laughs> and, and um, talk to me about these things. And I didn't realize it until I got much older that he was, in a weird way, teaching me through those conversations that my voice mattered, my opinion mattered. And when I got to high school and I would you know, get into arguments or debates or conversations about the Leafs game the night before with people in my class, a lot of the guys were always shocked and surprised that I, first of all, liked hockey and that I knew what I was talking about and I knew so much and that I was willing to disagree with them. That's a big one. <laughs> yeah, and you know, a lot of, this is just the reality of the situation, a lot of the girls that I went to school with back then they weren't into sports. They didn't watch the Leaf game every night with their dad, or if they did, they didn't really care about it um, the way that I did. And I just want little girls out there who, you know, love sports, but maybe don't have that role model in their life, or they don't have that parent that's telling them that their voice matters, to know that it does. And that, you know, now more than ever, women are making big strides, I think, in sports. Yeah, I mean, look at Jessica Mendoza. Yeah, huge. First huge. MLB color commentator on TV. Yeah, she's awesome. And you know, Katie Nolan is someone that I really admire too. She, yes, she's a comedian, but when certain things happen that are important, she uses her voice and she goes viral talking about it. So, you know, she's been very vocal about domestic violence in the NFL and the way the NFL handles those situations. So, um, for me, it all stems from that. It all stems from those conversations with my dad and, and that's where I gained all my confidence was from those. And I just want other people to have that same opportunity. Do you think we are, we're ever gonna get to that place where it's not like people are looking to see it's the first three mil of this? It's the, you know, I spoke to somebody at a sports network and they were like, you know, will we get to that point where there won't be a need for she's for sports? It will just be, we all love sports or something, a, be a, better, a better title than that. But do you think we'll get there? I hope so. I really hope so because at the end of the day, we're all just sports fans. Yep. Why do we always have to qualify well, for a girl. She knows sports for a girl. Yeah. I hate that. Just that she knows sports. I just, no, how would I just yeah, know I sports? Just know. Or I just love sports. Um, I also started doing these um, hump day hangouts yep. uh, with Sylvia Yerkstevich, whose name, I've known her for seven years. I actually so I looked up her name, her name just to remember how to pronounce it. Yeah. Glad you said it. Then I don't even <laughs> sure that I said it right. But her and I are obviously both sports fans and she works in the industry. And when we started doing hump day hangouts, we were like, are we gonna like, like, you know, we're two girls that like sports. And once we talked about it, we were like, why do we have to qualify it? Why can't we just do our segment and talk sports without, without selling it as two women who like sports? We don't, I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna have to do that. I just wanna be someone that likes sports, likes to talk about sports and knows her stuff. That's it. Yeah. Um, I heard that you are a big karaoke fan. I love karaoke. <laughs> like it's an extreme passion. Wow. I like had a super professional, serious karaoke hit or whatever it is machine with an like with a real amp wow. like with the amp had controls on it wow. with like a legit microphone. Like I could have gone well, I did go and like perform. Like I was gonna like, say, places. like maybe like you know, I know that at the time we had Canadian Idol. I don't know if it's still on. I auditioned for Canadian. You Idol. did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> when I was 16. Oh, wow. Uh, mouthful of braces. What was I your song? Went, what did I sing? Ain't too proud to beg. Oh, That's what I TLC. Sang. Um, 
The Temptations. The Temptations. Yes, oh, the original. Okay. I know you're also a hip-hop fan. Yeah, yeah, I do like my hip-hop. I, I like to think I can rap. I can't really, but I like to pretend that I but can. But it sounds like you're all in when you do. I mean, you had that karaoke machine. You had the top-notch machine. Um, you know, talking about rappers, if, you know, dead or alive, who would win a battle? Uh, Biggie Smalls or Kendrick Lamar Ooh. or Tupac and Drake? Tupac would Tupac. destroy Drake. I think so. Oh, I know so. <laughs> I know so. It's just, I just, I mean, I don't know, but I re I'm willing to bet that yeah. Tupac would destroy Drake. And who did you have, Biggie or Kendrick Lamar? Yes. Oh man, people are gonna hate. Are people gonna hate me if I say Kendrick I don't Lamar? Think so. I'll go Kendrick Lamar. Shout out to Kendrick Lamar. But, uh, I didn't get to go to the show the other day, yes. but I wish I could have. He's coming back here though. I heard something about that. Yeah. I think Toronto gets a lot of good concerts, a lot of good names coming here. I will say, Drake, I give him a lot of love for yeah. putting Toronto on the map yes. and all that yes. stuff. Yes. Especially with the Raptors. <laughs> um, to segue off of that, um, when I was Googling you, it was like I was typing in Jackie and then like your name came underneath Jackie Chan. Like, do you consider yourself a celebrity or do you consider oh. yourself like things have really changed since six years ago? Yeah, big time. Um, the word celebrity makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't know why. Um, I know that I'm on TV and people watch me in their living rooms and they know who I am, but I don't know why the word celebrity just doesn't sit right with me. Um, I'm a TV personality, I guess. Um, but even when I go out and about or I go to a Jays game or I go to a pub to watch a game and people come up to me, I always still, I always, my first thought is like, oh my gosh, like, did I go to school with you? Yes, Do I know I you? you? <laughs> I cannot be that jerk right now yeah. that doesn't remember. And then, you know, it obviously I remember and I, it dawns on me like, oh right, like, those things that I do in studio, they like go somewhere. Yes. Like those actually go yeah. out to people and they, they watch it. Um, but I enjoy it. I actually like it. And I think people that say they don't are lying. Like I, I love it. I love going out and meeting people and hearing that they like the show. It makes me feel good about what I do, to be honest. And that you're doing a good job. People recognize you. They know that, as you said, you have that voice. So you're that trusted voice. Yeah. Like, who's that girl? She talks about sports. She's our, our go-to sports voice. I feel like if I have to deal with the hate on social media, yes. then I'm allowed to enjoy the the perks out in public when people recognize who I am. And, and I love meeting people, so. And talking about the hate, how do you silence that and, and stay focused Well, on your job? I struggled with it a lot at first. And the reason I struggled with it at first, obviously anybody insulting you is gonna hurt. When you start getting it on a more regular basis, um, I think you develop a thicker skin for it. What really bugs me is that as a woman, again, the things that people criticize have nothing to do with my actual job. It's how I look. And they wouldn't it's, do that to a guy. It's how I look, how I got, how I got where I am, yeah. those sorts of things that just aren't important yeah. and they're not true. And so those are the things that really get to me. Like why does it matter what my hair looks like today? Or what, all the time, I used to have really short hair. I like you better with short hair. You need to grow your hair longer. You wear too much makeup. You don't wear enough makeup. I'm like, none of this should matter. Yeah. And if I was a guy, it you would not be getting that. So those are the ones that really bug me. But the people that are just like, I hate you, you suck. Yeah. Those I, I, those don't bother me anymore. Because you hear a lot of people say they just get to the point where they don't read those things anymore. And yeah. obviously you're doing a great job when people are actually, you know, asking you questions about sports on Facebook and saying, Jackie, what's your opinion on, you know, the Jay season? Or, you know, do you think Kyle Lowry's going? Like, I think when I was looking at some of the comments, it's like, okay, people are asking you like real sports comments and that's, yeah. they know that you're the go-to person for that. Um, segueing on to sports now, obviously the Jays season has not been that great. Single tier, know, single tier. As a fan, uh, have you sort of resolved with yourself to say, you know what, wasn't a great season, let's just move on and wait for the next one? Or how are you processing that? Because I know fans have different things to say about this. For me, it's, I look at the season and it's sad because the last two years have been so much fun as a fan, but also as a broadcaster, getting to cover some of this stuff. I remember I got to do the post game show for David Price uh, when he first got here and he was playing against the Yankees and it was a huge game um, in terms of the standings. And I just was like so nervous, but so excited. So it's sad that that is sort of over. Um, but for me, I just constantly think about next year. Like, can this team, be competitive in 2018? That's the real question to me. Yes, this season might be over, 
But I think we can all agree this team didn't live up to expectations this year. And I don't know that that means they won't next year. I think there, are, there do need to be some changes to the team. Yes. But, I mean, you still have one more year of Josh Donaldson. Yep. A healthy Aaron Sanchez can go a long way on that team. Marcus Stroman is looking okay. better than ever. We have Osuna. <laughs> Osuna is, I think, just a way above average closer. That guy, never trade, don't trade him. Yes, People are no. like, trade him. I'm yeah, like, no, 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 no. And so young and, and that poise and that consistency. Oh, I love Roberto yes. Osuna. I just, every, yeah, poise is a great word. Yeah, for he's it. just like he's cool talented. as a cucumber. I watch him and I'm like, I'd be sweating buckets out there. Yeah. And a gutsy kid to come out and admit that you're struggling with, yes. with issues off the field with, in terms of your mental health yes. takes a lot of guts. Yeah. So I give him a lot of props for that. But yeah, for me, the, the question I'm always asking around the newsroom and with people that I work with and even out in the street when I meet fans, what about 2018? Yeah. Let's forget about, let's stop being so depressed about 2017 yes, so and think about what do we need to do for 2018 because I feel like they could still compete with a few minor, well maybe not minor, but a few adjustments. A little, a little bit, but not a full-fledged like geek to chic. Like no, I think yes. like there are certain, they have certain pieces that are still awesome. But Shapiro doesn't seem like the guy that's gonna just hack certain people off like just a clean slate let's move on I feel like it'll be calculated moves oh he's definitely calculated yes. for sure but I don't know what to expect from him yeah. so I guess we'll see it's, like, tune in, everybody. it's intriguing though yeah, that excites is. me too like yeah. yes maybe the the I mean I'm still watching every single game like on edge but it's intriguing just to see you know what do you do with with Marco Estrada and Francisco Liriano, who are on expiring contracts. What do you do with Josh Donaldson, your MVP, who's only got one year left on his deal? He's going to hit free agency. Is he going to stay in Toronto? I don't know. So what do you do? Do you keep him and, and hope for the best next year? Or do you trade him and try to get a bunch of stuff? A bunch of stuff. Maybe trade Jose. Do you trade Jose <laughs> Bautista? I don't, I, there, there's so many yeah, questions. We have an old team, right? So. And I've gotten so many different opinions. There are people that believe this team can compete in 2018. Yeah, they have a lot of muscle when they're They when do. They're, you know, when, when they're, they're rolling. Together, they're rolling yes. um, and then there's a lot of people that are like, blow it up, yeah. it's over, get rid of everybody. Yeah. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it. But I still have that tiny little bit of hope that yes. this team could be good next year. I think they can be. I think that that's why they resonate with the fans. It's almost like a, you don't want to say a soap opera, but I think like learning about the Jays, learning about where some of the players come from, you know, seeing them on the field, they just, they're just a dynamic group of guys. They have personality, yes. that's for sure. Yes. <laughs> and do you prefer interviewing, uh, you know, your sports uh, guests or doing your interviews, sort of like that loose Facebook type of social media um, interview, or do you like to be in the studio, that more prescribed, kind of scripted environment? Um, I like it to be more laid back. Yeah. I think that's always what I'm trying to do when I do things like misplays with the Jays, or I go to Joe Carter's golf tournament, or, or I'm just doing... Rapping? Or rapping oh, with Bailey, WWE, WWE superstar. Yeah. I like to have fun, mm -hmm. and I like to make people feel, people that are watching, feel like they're there and they're just hanging out. That's always what I'm going for. Whether I accomplish that on a regular basis, I don't know. That's always what I'm trying to do, is be casual and laid back and fun, because I feel like if I can create that environment with the athlete, they're gonna be more comfortable. They're gonna show who they really are underneath of the fact that they're a professional athlete. And the person watching is gonna maybe learn something or, or see what the vibe of that person is really like. Because sometimes it's not even what you're talking about. It's the way yeah. about you. It's your energy, it's your vibe. And so I always tr wanna try to find that when I'm interviewing somebody and, and have a good time. Because sports are fun. Yeah, it's supposed to be. You have to be too serious <laughs> all the time. And where can we see you next? Are you working on any new projects or? Well, I am actually doing something that I've never done before, um, the Rogers Cup. I will be tennis. tennis. So I will be the courtside reporter for the women who are in Toronto this year. I'm also doing a bunch of sit down interviews um, with all the female players. So that's um, a new project for me that I'm really excited about. Um, yeah, Rogers Cup, it's gonna be fun. So I read somewhere that you love potato chips, so I figured I would hook you up with a bag of potato chips. We're not endorsing Old Dutch, but what is it about potato chips that get you going? Uh, I don't know. It's honestly, there's 
This sounds like an exaggeration, but I eat potato chips every day, like wow. pretty much every day. In some form of your like breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Yeah, I, I get them in there somehow. For me, it's just the perfect snack, and I'm a snacker. So if I'm watching a game or I'm working, I need something, Yes. and chips are just the best. Salty, just crunchy. I'm a salty over sweet kind of girl all the time. Um, everyone always asks me, what's your favorite potato chip? And I'm like, oh my gosh, there, I, there's no ranking. Like I love them all You tell them equally. how long do you have to talk about this, right? Yeah, I'm like, I love them all equally. I go through, I literally go through phases where it's like sometimes I'm into ruffle, like ruffled chips, sometimes I'm into kettle chips. Sometimes I'm into corn chips. It just like depends. Yeah, anything in the chip world is kind of your thing. Oh, anything. The only thing that I don't really like, once in a while I'll have a craving for it. I'm not into all dressed chips. No, neither am I. Yeah, There's too much going thing. on there. Yeah, like it's sometimes too it's yeah, sometimes it's a bit overkill. Yeah. Although I will say, when I do eat all dressed chips, I dip them in hummus. It will change your life. Yeah, that's interesting. It, it balances out the intensity. Yeah, I've never tried that before, but that's a great try. Time. It. I definitely will. <laughs> Well, Jackie, thank you so much for joining us. And, you know, uh, we can't wait to hear what other great things that you'll be up to. Thank you for having me. I've really had a good time. And also, before this ends, I have to say, this is weird, but I have a thing with pink and orange. I'm obviously wearing orange and you're wearing pink. I always think they look so good together. And too. people are like, they don't match. And I'm like, no, it's like vibrant and fun. It's color blocking. Like, it's, yes. it's nice. Yeah, they don't, yeah, don't get it. They don't get it. Don't get it. it. And, I love it. I and love bright it. colors pop on air, right? Exactly. See, she knows, pro. I was up till two. I needed, like, <laughs> brightness in my life. Yes. We thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, you know, as I said, we're definitely going to be following you on social media to see what you're up to next. No, thanks for having me. I love what you do. Thank you.